Katie's house is burning. Hurry, they're both in there. Of course. Help, the hut's coming down. They're gone. Both of them. As you wish. Help! The hut's coming down! Lurgulder, thank the gods, he's alive! You did it! You saved them both!
don't see the harm. Building's thirsty work. They've destroyed the stockade, Mother! It's... Enough. They're gone. The Deliverer of Cadnua. Thank you for making the journey. Abidan knows it's a long one. <sighs> well, I'm sure you wagered on a more civilized welcome. Still, we're much obliged for your capable intervention. I won't waste your time. Stalwart isn't much more than a grease stain on a map. What roads we've got in the White March are basically tracks in the snow. And for every traitor or adventurer that comes through, three of our own leave for good. But it weren't always so. There was a time when kings and queens sent their firstborn to these mountains, when the White March was the envy of empires. The Pargrin Dwarves transformed the White March once. We could bring some of that greatness back to Stalwart. But we need the White Forge. Of course. Been over two hundred years since anyone's felt so much as a summery breeze near it. I'm hoping you can do something about that. I'm not asking you to work the White Forge. I want you to find it. We've been trying to breach Durgan's battery for over a year now. Problem is, the other expeditions can't so much as dent the front door. We're an old mining town. Or we were until the Adirans pulled out and left us with a half-dug mine shaft and something resembling an inn. Since then, it's been a steady decline. You've seen the roads. Isn't much we can produce that the Valians can't ship cheaper. But the White Forge... Well, if we could fire it up again and start producing Durgan steel, or something close to it, wouldn't matter if we're in the White March or the Living Lands. Business would come. A dozen different groups have come through at our request, and several more besides. Been hoping that one of them could clear the way through Durgan's battery. But young or old, green or seasoned, it don't seem to matter. They cast their spells, chisel at the door, and search the grounds until they've worn new treads into the old stone. The lucky ones eventually go home. Plenty more find themselves on the wrong side of a blizzard, or an ogre raiding party. That's the long and short of it. We're laborers and fisherfolk, not adventurers. But Durgan Steel could put Stalwart on the map again, Open up the mines. Bring in new business. We just need the White Forge. Because you can shave stone with it. Cleave cast iron in two. And the stuff's as rare as it is remarkable. If we could make something even half as good... We'd have a market at our doorstep and work enough for all of Stalwart. <laughs> Where should I start? Ogres, blizzards, or sheer damned inaccessibility? It ain't for lack of trying, I'll tell you that much. Got untold riches in Durgan steel lying just inside, and never mind the White Forge itself. The Adherans who first settled Stalwart tried to crack it. So did the Valians. 
and every other cocky adventurer with more metal than sense. But the place has a funny way of sealing itself up. Front door stays shut, the tower entrances are clogged with rubble, and it's been impossible to blast a way in. It don't bear dwelling on. There's too many superstitions about that place as it is. Killed each other off, or so the old books say. Plenty of tales to go around, but none of them open the battery. And the last thing people need is another reason to fear the place. Whatever it was, the other Pargrin dwarven settlements in the White March, Bone Picker, the Hawk, and the rest, emptied out not long after, moved to gentler, greener lands. Had the right idea, if you ask me. Finally, someone talking sense. Durgan Steel wasn't just good. It was some of the best. We need the best if we're going to keep Stalwart alive. No one alive today has seen the White Forge, but the old stories tell that it was powerful, glowed white-hot and gave off a steady, even heat, unlike any other furnace. Let better-schooled folk puzzle over how the thing was built. I just want to see it put to use. Pargrin's a word in their language. Means traveler. They've been wanderers for generations, but I couldn't tell you much more. The battery's up the mountain to the north. A good hike away. Near Galvino's place, huh? So it is. Though I was going to suggest dealing with that ogre camp before anything. Mestre Galvino, as the old crosspatch prefers it, lives by himself and keeps the wilder and beasts at bay through sheer foulness of his temper. She means to say he's a skilled smith and animancer, who's lived in the shadow of Durgan's battery for over a decade. And he butters his bread on both sides and fits his left shoe before his right. But that's neither here nor there. <laughs> Me and the rest of the town. He knows better than to linger at our gates. Old lunatic finally went too far. And we sent word to the Valiant Academies. I don't like speaking on it, but if you want to get his guff... Just remind him that we gave him the boot. Ain't nobody here fond of the man, but he's a clever hand and a quick study. It's a fool who thinks he stayed so close to the battery without figuring something about it. You said as much to the last party, and we haven't seen hide nor hair of him since. Maybe they didn't run afoul of Baragon's ogres after all. Just watch your step. Galvino's place is a ways east of the battery and folk who pass it bring unsettling tales. Belongs to flames that whisper. Matron Baragon's clan. Hunters tell me they've been active of late. Hunting elk and otherwise minding their own damn business. Minding their own business. Never mind the latest expedition's disappearance or the broken stockade. I'm saying we shouldn't agitate them further. The brawl outside was just the latest patch of trouble. The ogre clans are getting bolder, and we'll all sleep easier knowing they aren't circling our walls. Also, Baragons like to have whatever the last expedition found. Rumor has it they disappeared near her turf. Killing a matron will only make our problems worse. The way to approach Baragon is with your hands held high. <sighs> if anyone could parlay with an ogre, I suppose it'd be you but they aren't known for their patience with Prattle. Good. Before you leave town, stop by the Graves' Rest. Most visitors to Stalward spend some time there, so Hafric and his patrons may be able to give you the lay of the land. What's on your mind? The Pargrin dwarves guarded it like a mother bear. It's a wonder we know as much as we do. What's on your mind? Adir founded us back in their colonial days to supply ore to the Empire. 
saw a fair bit of traffic from both sides of the White March then. But after the Deerwood claimed independence, Defiance Bay found cheaper places to get ore. Didn't have much reason to maintain our supply routes. Officially. Though with the state the roads are in, you wouldn't guess it. Here in the center? Let's see. The Graves' Rest is next door. Hafrik can set you up with a room and a hot meal there. The fishery's just on the edge of the lake, and the Temple of Andra is next to it. No one keeps a secret like Lavda. Or so I'm told. A few folk live in this part of town, too. Seemed a lot safer before the ogres broke through the western gate. Thiersch lives next to the old mine shaft, and Tana, the old mine overseer, is next door to me. I'm the mayor, or so I'm reminded every time there's a game shortage, ogre attack, or a neighborly dispute. I'm a builder by trade, though. Traveled all over Air Glonfoth and the Deerwood in my younger days, but ended up back here anyway. What's on your mind? They didn't volunteer much, and I knew better than to ask. I've seen all types charging through here. Professional companies with shiny new equipment as brazen as you please. And hopeless runs with nothing but tattered leathers. But these folk, I don't know what they were after. And the way they looked at you made you feel cold all over. Wish I could tell you more. What's on your mind?